guys, Devin here with Admiral Off-Road, and today we're going to be tearing apart this Dana 35. Let's get started. <laughs> turn into this axle, let's talk a little bit about it. Uh, this Dana 35 specifically came out of a, a Jeep Grand Cherokee, a ZJ. Um, it's set up for coil springs, so I'm not going to use it in the Cherokee. Uh, I didn't plan on it anyways. I already have a uh, Chrysler 8 and a quarter in it, so this would actually be a downgrade. Uh, I bought this axle because I have some different plans for it that are going to be in an upcoming video uh, that I think you guys will really like. Um, these Dana 35s came in uh, Wranglers, the TJs and YJs, and I think some JKs for a little while. Uh, they came in the Cherokees, the Grand Cherokees, um, at least the ZJs, and also the, uh, the Comanches. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take the diff cover off. Uh, to do that, we're going to need a half-inch socket and a, uh, a drip pan underneath because I'm pretty sure this is still full. That's all the bolts. Uh, next, I think we're going to have to whack this with a hammer. Seems like the uh, RTV is holding pretty well on this. So if you ever want to know what the inside of your differential looks like, here you go. Uh, here we have our spider gears, our ring gear, our pinion gear is uh, back behind the carrier here. You're not going to see it. Uh, but if I spin the yoke here, just like the drive shaft would do, you could see the uh, whole carrier spinning. And you can see the spider gears in here turning as well. Right now, this is just the right, rear, right wheel spinning. Uh, and that's just because this is an open differential. But if I stop the right wheel and then I spin this again, now the left wheel is spinning and you can see that is the other spider gear that's moving. This one is now locked in place, and this one is the one that moves. This Dana 35 is what they call a C-clip axle. That means the axle shafts are held in by little C-clips. Here are the end of the axle shafts. So to take them out, what I'm going to have to do is take out this bolt right here, and that's holding in our centering pin. Once I remove our centering pin, here's the centering pin, uh, I'm going to be able to take out the axle shafts by pushing them in towards the middle, and then removing the C-clips. One of the big weaknesses of these C-clip axles is if you snap an axle shaft, the axle shafts are only held in by the C-clips on the inside. That means, again, if you snap your axle shaft, the end of the axle shaft can slide out of the axle tube, and that's going to cause a lot of problems. To take out the centering pin retention bolt, we're going to need a 12-point uh, quarter-inch wrench. I'm going to hold down the pin in here, too. Put my gloves on since it's kind of messy in here. Here's that retention bolt. Now that we've taken that bolt out, we should be able to let's see, turn this just like this and slide out the centering pin. So let me put my finger through the back. Oh, yep, there we go. I can push it forward. Hopefully, you guys can see that and pull this centering pin right out. With the centering pin out, now, I uh, hope you guys can see this, I can push the axle shafts in. Oh, and if you heard that, that was the C-clip dropping out. I'll do the same on the other side. Here's what I'm doing from the side here. All I'm doing is I'm pushing in on the axle shaft, and if, I don't know if you could hear that, but the C-clip just dropped down inside uh, of our deck. Back in the center now, we just took those C-clips out. They just fell down inside when I uh, pushed the axle shafts in. So now, I'll start off on the left side. I can slide the axle shaft out. Here it is, here's our axle shaft. 
and here's the other side coming out. So nice and easy, once you pull out those uh, C-clips, the axle shafts just slide right out. Here are the two axle shafts we pulled out. This one's from the driver's side, and this one's from the passenger side. Uh, this one's a little bit longer. Uh, here's the C-clip that holds it in place. Here, I'll bring this up closer to you so you can see. Uh, the C-clip right here clips inside of this uh, narrow down part of the axle, and that holds it in place. So when I take the C-clip out, that allows the axle to slide out. Right here are the axle shaft splines. So if you hear somebody refer to a 27 spline axle shaft or a 29 spline axle shaft, they're just counting the number of these splines around the axle shaft. These ones here are 27 spline axle shafts. We're on the other side of the axle now because the next thing we're going to do is take out our pinion gear. To do that, I'm going to have to take off this nut right here and that's going to take an inch and an eighth socket. To do that, I'm also going to have to use this piece of wood to wedge between uh, my carrier and my, uh, my axle housing. Uh, the reason why I have to do that is because if I didn't, this would just spin and the gears would spin and I wouldn't be able to take the, uh, that nut off. So I'm going to wedge this in here so it won't move. And that way I'm going to be able to put all that force right on the pinion gear and remove it. There we go. Nut is off. We should be able to remove the rest of this too. There we go. It's coming. There we go. So you can see the splines on the inside here, and that just goes over the splines on the uh, pinion gear. And so when that sits in there, and that's what allows this to turn and to turn the pinion gear as well. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the carrier and then be able to take out this pinion gear as well. In order to remove our carrier, we're going to have to remove these four bolts here. When you do this, make sure you mark where the top, uh, which side is the top and the bottom, and which side these both come from, because they're only going to go back in one way. So if you want to put your gear set back in, you're going to have to mark this side and this side and which way is up. Sorry if I'm in your way. Alright, so like I said, when we take these out, I want to mark that this is the top, and this is on the right side, and that uh, stuck in there. This is the top on the left side. Now that we've taken those out, I should be able to pull out my carrier, yep, just like this, and we're free. Grab our uh, shims here as well. Now that we've got the carrier out of the way, I can press the, or I can uh, use a hammer, I guess, to push out our uh, pinion gear. Oh, there we go. So I can come. And there we go, we're free. I want to make sure I keep all of uh, the crush sleeves, our bearings, and everything intact, and all in the right order. Here's a C-clip that fell down in there. So that's our pinion gear. Now that we've got the pinion bearing out, uh, last thing we got to do is press out some of the races and shims that are in there. So I'm going to take a hammer and a punch and just kind of punch those out. There it goes. That's what we just took out, one of the races. And we got just a couple more things to punch out now from the other side. Alright. I did it.
two more things out. We got a bearing and a seal. So this is again from our, uh, our pinion. It's a pinion bearing and a seal. Alright guys, that is an empty axle. Uh, we took everything out. Next thing I want to do really quick is just go over to the bench, talk about everything we took out. But as far as the teardown goes, that's about it. Here's everything we took out of the axle today. We have our diff cover, our bolts. Uh, this is what held our uh, carrier in the axle itself. Uh, I have a marked driver side and passenger side and which side is up. Uh, that way I don't get them confused. Uh, here's the carrier. Um, we, on it we have our ring gear, our spider gears, our centering pin, and our centering pin retention bolt. When you take it out, you got to keep track of these little shims. There's going to be shims on each side of the carrier and that just helps align it inside of the axle. And if you mess up where the shims go or put too many on one side, uh, that's going to push the carrier too far to one side and that's going to affect how the ring gear meshes with the pinion gear and that's going to chew up these gear teeth really quick. Uh, if I take the, uh, the shim off and this little race off, uh, we can see a, uh, a bearing. Good idea just to check these while you've got it all apart anyways. Uh, and if you need to replace them, that's a pretty easy job. Just press these off and press the new one on. Uh, here's our pinion gear. Uh, we have the gear itself. Uh, we have a bearing, a race, uh, right here is a crush sleeve, and then another bearing, race, and then our uh, seal. I had to knock some of these out with a, a hammer and a punch, so make sure you guys uh, don't leave any of that in the axle housing, and then buy a new one and can't figure out why you have some extra parts, so just go ahead and knock all that stuff out. Uh, here's the, uh, the yoke that attaches to the drive shaft. This is what attaches the drive shaft to the pinion gear, and this is the nut that holds it together. Uh, if the previous owner uh, changed your gear ratio and didn't tell you what it was, you can figure it out by counting the number of teeth on your ring gear and then counting the number of teeth on your pinion gear and then divide the number on the ring gear by the number of teeth on the pinion gear and that's going to give you your axle gear ratio. We already talked about our axle shafts earlier, but I just thought I'd add a couple things. Uh, make sure you really, really don't hit these splines on anything. You don't want to mess up your axle shaft splines. If you do, you're probably going to need to get a new axle shaft, and that's just a pain. Uh, make sure you keep track of your C-clips. These C-clips are really small, and they like to hide from people. Uh, so keep them either attached on there or in a safe place where you know where they are. Uh, if you need to replace your wheel studs, now's the time to do it. If you uh, messed up your threads or you broke one, you can just hit it out with a hammer, press in a new one, and you're good to go. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below. And if you like what you saw here, please like and subscribe. Thanks.